preparing. About a minute. Yeah. All right. We are live on Facebook. Morning, Facebook world. I think, let's see. Checking, checking. Things are slow this morning. There we go. All right, we're rolling. So we're not live on the radio, but we are live on Facebook. Morning, Facebook world. Yay. Uh, it was crazy being out of town though. I was telling before you hopped on Benny, I flew home yesterday. The airport is packed, like super packed. It's amazing how many people are flying. What, which was what, what? Oh, yesterday morning when I flew home, the airport's really oh, like, airport. there's a lot of people there. Yeah. It's a busy travel and everyone's kind of getting out and coming back. All the same I know. Time. How dare you do that on my watch too? Exactly. It's <laughs> hoping to have the plane all to myself, but not anymore. Right? <laughs> All right, stand by. Let's bring it. Here on. we go. All right. And this is my time. Yeah, this is my town. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 425 show, your place to be for all things real estate and lifestyle related here on the East Side. I'm your host, Nicole Mangina with Windermere Real Estate. We have two amazing guests with us on the show today. We've got Phil Meganhart and Ross Haltrup joining us to talk about Kirkland Uncorked coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend. Good morning, guys. How are you? Hey, good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good stuff. Thanks for being here. I'm so excited to talk about Kirkland Uncorked. But I always like to start the show with a real estate update. So this morning, I thought it'd be good. This has come up several times in the last couple of weeks for buyers understanding when it comes to financing and what the different terms mean and how it affects your offer, specifically the strength of your offer when you're negotiating. So there's an approved buyer that has a financing contingency. There is an approved buyer that is waiving a financing contingency. So in both of those scenarios, you're getting a loan. You've talked to a lender, you've gone through the approval process. One's including a contingency that that gets completed in the contract. The other is getting loan, but they've waived it. And then the third is paying cash, which means there's no loan involved. You have buckets of money and you're just gonna use your own money to finance the sale. So what are the differences with respect to the seller? How do they view those differently? Because I've had this conversation several times lately with buyers as they're trying to understand why one would make it stronger versus another when they're doing their offer. So financing that's approved and you've got a contingency. This means you've got an out on the contract. It means if the house doesn't appraise uh, that you have the opportunity to renegotiate that price or get some credits from the seller or walk away if you can't come to an agreement. It also means if you lose your job, for some reason, you just cannot get this loan on the closing date, you are able to walk away and keep your earnest money. Obviously, this one provides the greatest protection for you as a buyer, but also the greatest risk for the seller. Uh, the second option would be that you're getting a loan, you're pre-approved, but you have removed the financing, you're waiving the financing contingency. So that means you're still getting a loan, you're getting the money from somewhere else, but if for some reason the house does not appraise, you are paying the difference in cash plus your down payment. And if for some reason you are not able to close, you can't get that loan for some reason, that you either have an alternative um, form of being able to come up with the money or that you are willing to forego that earnest money and give it to the seller. So less, more risk for you as a buyer, less risk for the seller, because you're saying that if there's any issues, you're gonna take care of that on your end. The third option would be if you're paying cash, which means there's no financing contingency. Best scenario for the seller, because it means there's no appraisal, fewer opportunities to go wrong. The catch is though, is that to make your uh, cash offer truly stand out is you have to have a quick close. Meaning if you're getting a loan, you're getting financing, you usually need probably 25 to 30 days before you can close 
your transaction from the time you write the contract and it gets accepted to the time you close. And that's because the lender needs that much time to finish the loan. So there's really not a lot of ways around that. If you're doing cash though, you can close at any time. So if you close cash in a week, that is your strongest offer and will make the biggest difference in your negotiation. Hopefully that makes sense, but if you've got questions or just need help with the process of buying and selling, I invite you to reach out. You can always find me via email, Nicole at NicoleMangina.com. There you go. Buyer and seller tip for the week. And with that, let's go back to talking about yeah, Kirkland and Fork because it's one of my favorite events uh, of all time. So thank you, Phil. Um, and I, Ross for joining I, lo I love that we're your favorite event of all time. And the tips that you gave are pro tips because it's very challenging for people to always figure that stuff out. So the pro yes. tip that I have is, yes. is when you come to Kirkland and Court, you can, the locally, you can buy your ticket at the local QFC and Ooh. by buying your ticket directly at QFC, you get, you get four extra tastes, uh, by, by buying it. It's our best deal. It's our best deal. Um, moving around a little bit. It's our best deal. Uh, for the tickets. So that's my pro tip is go to QFC right up there, the new QFC and uh, in town or the one over uh, in Renton or Redmond as well uh, for you East side people. But uh, the easiest thing to do is of course, is go to the uh, Kirkland and Cork website and see all the ticket options, but that's my pro tip. And then you get there. And uh, the, the nice thing about it is we have a wine shop. So uh, the wine shop is, uh, you can take things home, uh, bottles home with you. But the main thing about Kirkland and Cork that I want to share is a uh, Homeward Pet Animal Shelter. It's a no-kill animal shelter. They have been our partner. Uh, they're in Woodenville. They've been our mm -hmm. nonprofit partner for a number of years. And we are dog-friendly event all three days. And um, come down, you know, sit in, you know, sit on the the marina park or sit, you know, sit on the water, have a glass of wine. And knowing that you're making not only a change for the world, but change for our four-legged uh, friends out in the world too. So all good. I love it. You're speaking my language. We have two rescue dogs. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of pet adoption. I, it, that's great to hear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, this is uh, awesome pro tip. Thank you for that, QFC. Plus they have parking. So you could go there, get your tickets. They have parking. And then just walk on down to Kirkland and Cork. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's the real pro tip right there. Parking. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Fighting parking. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. Nicole, I look forward to seeing you. And Ross is going to tell you about the rest, all the rest of the events. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Phil. Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, Ross, let's let's chat. Like it, I, so I'm a Kirkland resident. I can. Um, yeah. And fortunate enough, I can just walk down the street and enjoy Kirkland and Cork. Oh, yes, thank um, you. <laughs> so I got the parking thing handled. But <laughs> I love it, it. Really, is one of my favorite events. It's a, it's a community event, but it's really a regional event as well because you've got wineries from all over, and there's a lot of people that show up to this thing. It's definitely not just Kirkland residents that come to Kirkland yeah. And Cork. Yeah, the weather's always nice. You know, we've got all, all of our wine is from Washington. So you're not not only supporting Kirkland, like you said, you're not only supporting uh, our, our great nonprofit partner, but you're you're also supporting all these Washington businesses uh, that are selling wine. There's a bunch of Washington businesses that are providing uh, great fun vendor supplies. So there's pet supplies, there's artwork, <laughs> there's restored vintage decor, clothing, jewelry, all that stuff. So. You're really, you know, like like Phil said, it's a very big regional event, uh, and you're supporting a lot of people from all over the state when you come. So, it's awesome. So it and yeah. it's it's right at Marina Park, so it's mm -hmm. it couldn't be a better setting. It's you're right on the miss. shore of Lake Washington. Yeah, you're right right on the water. The weather's always great. Uh, it's it's beautiful. I uh, I've been working it for three, four years now. Um, uh -huh. And we've even, we've even had a little bit of time to throw a line in the water while, while we're enjoying the day. So it, I it, love couldn't, it. Be, it couldn't be better. That's great. So yeah, you yeah. guys are at Marina Park. You kind of take over that whole parking lot down there because mm -hmm. um, you have food trucks. There's stuff during the day for the kids. There's the street fair. There's just all kinds of fun stuff down there. 
Yeah, yeah. On uh, on Friday, we actually open uh, at two o'clock. That street fair that you mentioned, right on Kirkland mm-hmm. Avenue. Uh-huh. Um, and then Friday at five, our wine garden, which takes up the the entire greenery that is the park itself, uh, opens at five, and we've got music playing until nine o'clock. And then we repeat it again on Saturday and repeat it again on Sunday. So I great. love it, and it's yeah. the part the the street fair and the food trucks, you can just come down. Anybody can enjoy those. It is, but the wine garden part is ticketed, correct? That's the portion you need a ticket for. Yeah. So, so this year, most of the food is inside the wine garden. We've got a couple of nice tasty, tasty snacks that'll be outside of the wine garden for folks to partake in. But uh, the bulk of the experience is, is going to be the wine, the food inside. And it's, Mm -hmm. uh, it's, $30 in advance right now. And as Phil mentioned, if you go through QFC, um, you can get some extra tastes. So I would highly recommend that route. Yeah. And I mean, there's some really great wineries down there. That's one of the reasons I love going to the event. There's a couple of my favorites are there. Airfield, Alexandria, Nicole, love those guys. Um, Yeah. Well, and then there's always some that I'm like, gosh, I'm not familiar with this winery so it's a great way to try some new ones as well and kind of find some hidden gems it's it's funny that you picked those two specifically because one of one of them uh alexandra nicole has has been with us for years and airfield Uh is a is a new participant this year so oh funny uh, (laughs) we got a little little bit of old and new yes Uh, yeah that'd be great and i think that's great and you guys make it fun. There's lots of different things. Like you said, there's music down there. What mm-hmm. are some of the bands that you have coming this year? Oh, boy. Uh, I should have written that one down. We've got, <laughs> we, we've, we've got our, our favorite uh, DJ Indica closing out the night. We've got a couple of live performances be- before his set. So uh-huh. um, my, my, my focus, embarrassingly, there is, is the beverage world. So I That is I all right. To, I, I did not have the entertainment prepared for you. I'm sorry. That's okay. But I know there it's are, good. There are, there are three live performances. One one being the DJ that ends the night, and everybody loves uh, everybody loves what he brings to the table. So. Yep. Well, and yeah. I know you guys get rocking on Saturday. It's a it's yeah, a fun absolutely. event all weekend, but you guys get rocking on Saturday we night. Sure do. We sure do. I live do. just a little bit up the hill from it, and you can usually <laughs> still hear it at our house. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Because there's food trucks, like you said, there's great food throughout the whole weekend, but there's a burger competition on Mm -hmm. Saturday night, correct? Saturday Saturday evening, we've got the burger competition. Uh, Another uh, fun activation on on Friday, right after we open, we actually have a really fun uh, cocktail tasting experience. Oh, fun. uh, It is a wine fest, but it's not just for the wine lovers. So Mm -hmm. um, we've got Monkey 47 Gin, uh, okay. And they will be on site with a couple of uh, guest bartenders uh, mixing cocktails for it's a, a 40 person ticketed experience. But just like the burger brawl that you mentioned, uh, everybody's welcome to, to observe, uh, maybe take down some notes on uh, what you can prepare at home. Uh, so Got it. that goes that goes for the, the cocktail tasting experience and, and the burger brawl that you mentioned on Saturday. It's uh, another competition style experience. We've got some judges on hand. Uh, and we've got two chefs that will be dueling it out to make the best burger they possibly can. So, awesome! Who are the chefs? Who's doing the burgers? Uh, that's that's an, that's another one that uh, I, I don't <laughs> I have it. for you, Nicole. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it's all good. We're playing stump the presenter today. Yes, um, right. You're doing great. <laughs> I love it. So, and are those separate ticketed events? Like, so it's thirty dollars. So the, the burger come and taste and it's separate. You need a, an additional ticket if you want to do the cocktail thing, correct? Correct. So the cocktail experience is, is just a, a $15 add on. Uh, okay. And, and, and so that comes with your entry to the event as well. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And then the burgers, do you need a separate ticket or you just show up and you pay extra for the burgers if you want them? Um, well, it's it's not listed currently on our on our website, but I believe that is that is the case with the Burger Brawl as well. Is it's just an add-on experience. Um, I love it. 
but normally normally we crown a winner and uh, there's there's a little bit of there's some samples available as well so awesome well who doesn't love a good burger right, right. so right there'll be some fun tips for sure and i know they'll make yeah. it a, a fun thing to watch and be there and be a part of um, what are some of the other wines? I was reading on your um, website today. I see you've got 20, 20 plus wineries there. Yeah, yeah. 70 got, uh, plus varietals. Let's let's talk wine. Let's go to your wheelhouse because that's what we sure, really yeah. want to talk about anyway. We've got we've got uh, all sorts of uh, whites and rosés are, are big smash hits at this mm -hmm. event. We've we've got some reds coming in as well. As you mentioned, we've got Airfield Estates this year. Uh, Ancestry Cellars is a returning guest, uh, Alexandria Nicole, Michael Florentino, uh, all returning guests, Millbrandt Wines, um, and then some newcomers in Eternal Wines. Um, we've got Lost River Winery, uh, Airfield, as I mentioned, Tattoo Girl Wine is a popular one at my house. Uh, and then folks like uh, Mercer Wine Estates is providing our, our signature wine this, this year, as well as uh, uh, some of their own uh, concoctions. So they're, they're bringing a Vignette. Uh, they've got a uh, Chardonnay. They've got a Rosé and, and a Malbec. So nice variety coming in from them. Uh, you know, Three of Cups, Patterson, Natchez Valley, Fin Hill, Smack Wines. I think I got everybody. Siglio, Simpatico. Don't want to leave anybody out here. I know. You, uh, get, you lot, get some good stuff. A lot, lot of Woodenville wine. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, wine, wine from all over the state. I love it. Um, and I, I love to go, it's it's fun to try all the wines, but a lot of times I try and go with like a mission too. Rosé, I, you know, I'm a little late to the rosé party, but I'm totally sure. on the rosé train now. Um, and that is a perfect example. I don't like particularly sweet wines. I tend to like drier wines. And rosé is okay. a perfect example. I think that's why I was late to the party because I thought, well, I just can't do sweet wines. But there's a lot of rosés that are not. And so, you know, whether there's, you think, oh my gosh, I want to go to this, you know, these couple wineries and taste everything you can from a specific winery, you know, kind of do the full tasting, almost like if you're in a tasting room or mm -hmm. to just like, hey, let's go find out more about rosés. This is a perfect opportunity to do it. I think you've got more than a dozen rosé options at Kirkland oh, uh, Uncorked. Oh yeah, almost Not almost that, everybody's providing a rosé this year, and uh, yeah, the the and really you may cool not thing get about through all twelve and in, in one tasting because this is true. This is my true. Guess is at some point they're all going to taste the same. <laughs> yeah, uh, but the the really cool thing about our event is is uh, we the wineries a lot of them provide staffing and they'll be there yeah. all weekend long, so you can ask them these pointed yes. questions. You know, if you're a big rosé fan or if you like something less sweet, more dry. Uh, mm -hmm. They can they can recommend something that they have available, uh, and you know they'll probably lead you into into their their winery to try something else as well. So yeah, it's a nice way to make a relationship and and uh, you know see a familiar face once you finally get through that door, right? So exactly. So uh, yeah, always so I think good to know somebody. Exactly. In the wine world too, isn't it though? Yeah. <laughs> If you are just tuning in today, we have Ross Holtrip joining us. He is helping to put on Kirkland Uncorked, which is next weekend here mm -hmm. in downtown Kirkland, because it's Kirkland Uncorked, August 27th through the 29th, Friday through Sunday. You can go online and get tickets, kirklanduncorked.com. Pro tip, though, if you go to QFC and get your tickets, you can get extra tastings for your tickets. True. Who doesn't want extra tasting, right? True. So, um, yeah, and lots, like you said, lots of great different wineries. Some you'll recognize, or at least for me, some I recognize. Some are fan favorites of mine. Others are new, so I'm excited to learn about some new wines next weekend. They've got great food options because it's good to get a little food in there while you're doing your wine tasting. They've got some great things. And just a fun street fair. It's really just a great weekend to be out kind of cruising around. I'm sure you'll run into somebody you know, you can get to catch up with people. <laughs> I feel like we're all so hungry to connect. Um, yes. That I love that this is happening, it's outside. So that's, you know, nice and helpful. Uh, but it, it makes my heart happy to see some of these things back this year that we missed out on last year. 
Yeah, that's that's another really nice part about this event, right? Is it's it's outside. There's a lot of space uh, for people to spread out in the mm -hmm. wine garden, um, and you know the the weather's always great. So there's, yeah, there's really no excuse. And we've got, as you exactly. mentioned, the food. We've got uh, we've got a little bit of Italian. We've got a little bit of Korean. We've got some some barbecue, some uh, American sandwiches. So there's a little bit for everybody uh, out at our event this year. Yeah, exactly. You know, the evenings tend to get a little rowdier. So, you know, if you like a little more space, maybe go in the afternoons. Um, yeah. But if you're up for a party, it's a good place to be on a Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, there's 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 all sorts of space right in front of the stage. There's the nice hillside over on the left uh, and a bunch of chairs and tables for people to spread out as well. So yeah, well, and there's and even, great... there's the beach right there too. So it, that's Lots exactly, that's just what I was going to say with being on that Marina park, there's the beach right there. There's mm -hmm. the dock you can kind of walk out mm -hmm. on. So there's plenty of space to, you know, interact to whatever degree you are comfortable, enjoy some great food and wine, listen to some amazing music. Um, I love live music. There's just something about it. Makes me happy. Um, yeah, there has and, not been and just be out there. I know. So I'm, I'm happy to see some of that coming back. And I also, I do have to admit, I feel like we're all going to hunker down indoors here a little bit as we run into fall. So I feel like this is our time to get out, just see people and remember what the world is like. <laughs> yeah. Summer, summer is rapidly ending. I'm, I'm sitting outside in downtown Seattle right now with a jacket on because it's a little chillier than it has been the last week already. I so. know. I know. And pretty soon I'll be sorry I said this, but I do like the cooler morning. Uh oh, um, <laughs> you know, well, I like the, it's, to me, it's perfect no, I, like the cool morning and then it warms up in the yeah. afternoon. But yeah. those cooler mornings are kind of nice. Yeah. So and it's nice to have the air a little clearer this week than it was. Now that we got True. some of that smoke cleared out um, again, it's we're talking about Kirkland Uncorked next weekend, August 27th to the 29th and Marina Park downtown Kirkland, all kinds of easy parking in and around there. Uh, you can make a weekend of it. You could stay at the Heathman if you wanted to, because, you know, you don't want to drive after doing a bunch of wine tasting, um, but there'll be great food options there fun street fair. I would love the street fair that you guys have great stuff down there. There's always really fun and interesting things. And it's a great way to interact with the artists. I love local artists too. It's fun to support them as well. Yeah, we've got a, a really cool um, sketch artist this year who's who's new to the event, but he does some really great uh, pencil work, uh, very lifelike, oh, realistic. Cool. So look for that on uh, on the site grounds. That's awesome. Any yeah. other, um, what's, what's your favorite? vintage or not vintage but type of grape like we talked about rosé and rosé isn't really a type of grape because i know there's pinot rosé there's lots of different grapes they use to make rosé but there's like yeah. rosé cabs vignettes you mentioned i don't really know anything about those those could well, be fun to check out there i i don't necessarily have a favorite but one thing that both myself and another member of my team and and again we've been doing this for years we've been working with wine for quite a while but we learned uh -huh. a nice, a fun fact that uh, oh. there's there's a type of wine called the Syrah, S-Y-R-A. Yes. But then there's also a type of wine that's spelled S-I-R-A, and it's a different grape. It I've completely never different it. grape. So they're they're both pronounced Syrah, and uh, they're they're two different products. So when you if you if you see one or the other just uh at, maybe ask the the winery about it and see uh what you can learn because that was news to me i have never heard of the syrah s s i r a h you said yeah uh Is and, and just yep and three three of cups winery has the s i r a h which is that's a syrah that i had not seen before um but we've got a couple other providers this year that have the S Y R A H version of the Syrah. So okay, both, and that one both, I'm familiar both, with. Both reds, but they're they're a little bit different uh, in in their flavor profile. So are they different sure grapes both. or different preparations or both? No, they're they're different grapes altogether. See, I'm learning something new Isn't, today. I know. Isn't that Never fun? heard of this before. Okay. Is that fun? All right, I'm gonna have to work that into my rosé light tasting of trying there this different go. red. I've never heard of that. That's cool. 
Yeah, and you don't want to just just try reds and rosés all weekend, right? You want you got to switch it up a little bit. That's why we we offer some nice reds too. So. Exactly. Well, and see, that's why it's a three day event because again, yeah, you, like totally. you said, you can't get through all of these in one day. <laughs> yes. Or it'd be best if you didn't. <laughs> Well, and speaking speaking of the fact that it is a three day event, I, I, it would be uh, remiss of me to to not mention on Sunday we do have an awesome uh, a dog model search sponsored by City it. Dog. Uh, oh, fun! So registration opens at eleven a.m. As, as Phil mentioned earlier, it is a dog friendly event all weekend, um, but okay. on Sunday specifically, everybody brings their dogs out. Uh, registration opens at eleven, as I said, and then the the City dog cover dog model search uh, begins at one o'clock on Sunday. I it's love it. Ten dollar registration fee, and it goes directly to our uh, our our uh, our nonprofit partner, Homeward Pet Adoption Center. So you can oh, come out and see all the dogs on the catwalk. <laughs> I love time. it. Look yes. in their Sunday best. Yes, I exactly. Have no doubt. That is great, and yes, and thank you for mentioning a that because. I'm totally coming to watch that. Uh, there you go. But also that, you know, you guys do benefit Homeward Pet Adoption Center because I think that's lovely. Like I said at the beginning of the show, we have two rescue dogs. So um, pet adoption is very near and dear to my heart. Yeah. So they're, I love that you guys They have a them. great mission. They've been a great partner for many, many years. Uh, so love, love to support it. them. And yeah. who wouldn't want to cover a dog who's like a cover model? That's great. I know. It's so so fun. we'll have to scrub up our dogs. One of our dogs doesn't play well with others, but maybe we'll bring the other one. <laughs> <laughs> she, she would be great. <laughs> there you go. Can't wait to see it. See, so great reason to come out. Just experience something fun, something new, support a great local organization. Um, Kirkland Uncorked. It really is. It's just, it's a great way to do it. There's lots of parking downtown Kirkland. We mentioned parking at Kirkland Urban. Um, I, they probably are not happy that I just shouted that out, but you probably could. Um, <laughs> but there's lots of other great places to park downtown Kirkland. It's really easy to get to. And then Kirkland's, you know, it's just fun. It's such a walkable place, no matter where you're at. It's easy to get down there. Who doesn't want to spend time on the water drinking wine? Like, it yeah, just... I mean, we're, we're a block away from a whole bunch of other retail establishments, uh, in shops as well so you know you can come and stroll along kirkland avenue and see what what the vendors have to offer and then head up the block and see what downtown kirkland has to offer and then when you're done with that come join us in the wine garden there you go and so you're supporting local businesses like all day planned exactly what more could you want in life yeah. again you can go to kirklanduncorked.com if you want to find out more about the wineries purchase tickets, but your pro tip is go to an East Side QFC location to buy your tickets because you get two, two extra tastings, four, four extra tastings, four extra four, tastings. Four extra tokens Hello. and most, most of our wine is one token a piece. So some of, some of the special, uh, there's some dessert wines that are two and, and uh, uh, but most of them are one token. And so it's four extra tastes. Got it. So yeah. there you go. Pro tip. Make it down to downtown Kirkland next weekend, August 27th to the 29th. You'll be so glad you did. Thank you for joining us, everybody, this week. So great to have you on the show, Ross. I really appreciate you being here. Take care, and we'll see you all next Tuesday. Bye. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, I'll clear you, too. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Please.